Hey everyone, it's Shati for the Rough Cuts on Sunday. I hope you've had a great week. Today I'm going to talk about an animated feature. I think it's been a while since I've talked about an animated feature. It's been a while since I've talked about any feature for that matter. But I think it's been, you know, it's, it's been a good amount of time since I've done an animated story. So today I'm going to talk about Perfect Blue. This was a film that I had to see in one of my classes at UT. Um, for those of you not familiar with UT, it's the University of Texas in Austin. In, I think, 2000? Two, either in 2000 or 1999, they offered a writing component course that was entitled The World of Japanese Animation. So that was actually a college course that you could take. I took it, and it was really, really good. It was really good. And one of the films that we saw was Perfect Blue. This was directed by Satoshi Kon. Some of you might have seen his other works, such as Paprika. But otherwise, I don't think he's all that well known in the U.S., or really outside of Japan. But this was based on a novel by the novelist um, Yoshikaz Takuichi. I'm probably totally butchering that name. It's been a long time since I've had to actually speak any sort of Japanese. Usually I'm just reading it. But this, it's a good movie. It's a psychological thriller. And there aren't that many animes that are psychological thrillers I'm very crazy about. But this one actually is pretty cool. And my cat is joining us. It's like, this one is actually pretty cool. What it is, you have this girl who is a J-pop singer. She's in a group called Cham, and she's extremely popular, very sweet and wholesome. Everyone loves her. And she announces one day that she is retiring from music, and like many J-pop artists, they go into acting. They try to go into acting. So that's what she's doing. She's leaving her career as a musician, and she wants to become an actress. So a lot of her fans are really, really upset about this. And so, you know, she, she understands that, but still she has to do what she feels as though is right for her at this point in time. And she has this one particular fan who's called Mr. Mamanya. And he's really, really obsessed with her to the point of being like dangerously obsessed with her. And... So she starts this career, and she's in this bit part in a television show. And then it starts out where she's supposed to be a rape victim in a strip club. It's exactly opposite of this wholesome image that she had beforehand. So a lot of people are upset by it. And, you know, her parts get bigger and bigger, and... She starts to get these really disturbing messages, fax messages, and then it becomes a lot more personal. Then this thing comes up that's supposed to be like her diary online. And this was back during the time when the internet was still kind of new. I mean, it had been around for a while, but still not that many people were jumping on the bandwagon at the time. This was in 1997 when this was done. And so she was freaking out by this. She didn't know what was going on, but whoever was doing it had a lot of really personal details about her. So then she started to think that she was going crazy and she was getting her role in this drama mixed up with her real life. And the people that she was starting to turn to and trust, they would be found murdered. And then she just thought she was losing it. So it's really, really well done. It's disturbing. This is a really disturbing anime. And, but I highly recommend it. It's good. It's good. I don't recommend that many, or rather, I can't think right now. It's like four in the morning. I've been at a, at a gaming convention all day long. It's not often that I talk about movies that I hate on here. I've only done it a, a couple of times. So most of these things that I talk about, I do highly recommend. And this is definitely one of those. If you, even if you hate 
anime, give this one a try because it's a good story. Originally, it was supposed to be live action, but after the Kobe earthquake, um, the production studio was destroyed. So then that really cut into their budget. So it became just a, a straight to video one shot thing. But it's it's really well done. It's really, really well done. And if you only get to see the dubbed version of this, even that's not too bad. I always prefer the original, like, Japanese version, or the original, any version of any movie. But the, the dubbed isn't that bad of this one, actually. And actually, as for the title of Perfect Blue, it doesn't mean anything. I saw an interview one time, like, several years ago, with the original writer of the novel, and he said that he happened to see it, I think, as a title of another novel, something like that. It was a title of something, and he just thought, huh, that's a really nice name. That's how this is named. So the name itself means absolutely nothing, it has nothing to do with the story. But it's a good story. Check it out if you ever see this. I do believe it is on DVD, and... Every now and then, every once in a blue moon, it's actually on cable. Usually not that often. I think it's been on cable like three times in like the last 10 years. But, it, you know, sometimes it's on there. Go check it out if you see that it is on. And I will see you next time. Until then, goodbye and have fun. Be safe.